Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. After we just recently reviewed the first Snapdragon X Elite powered notebook, the ASUS VivoBook S15 OLED to give you a more user experience focused first impression, we did some more testing during the past week to see what Qualcomm's new silicon is really made of. While we are working on quite a few reviews for all of those new Windows on ARM devices, we wanted to give you this sort of baseline comparison when it comes to performance and efficiency to see how the new chips stack up against the competition from Intel, AMD and of course Apple. But before we get into it, the tests we chose are of course very theoretical and do not always translate that well into real world use. But they do give us the chance to compare vastly different notebooks under more or less similar and controlled conditions. We also settled mostly on natively running tests to make everything as fair as possible, so please keep that in mind for our results. This also meant that we had to rely on benchmarks with limited results in our database. And we did not have access to some of the low power U chips from Intel and AMD on such short notice. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. Before we have a look at our results, let me get you up to speed with what we are dealing with in general. Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X Elite and X Plus chips basically represent Windows on ARM 2.0. And while they tried it before with lacking success, it seems like this launch is a much bigger push with support from Microsoft and almost all major manufacturers. If that will be enough, well, only time will tell. For now, the big revolution Qualcomm has been promising feels more like an alternative to Team Plus and AMD's offerings already available. And considering that we will see new silicon from the big players within the next few months, well, there might be tough times ahead for the new architecture. In general, Snapdragon powered laptops are very easy to spot right now since they are all labeled as Copilot Plus PCs, marking the joint AI efforts with Microsoft and they all ship with an ARM version of Redmond's operating system. In our tests, there are quite a few native apps already available, be it everything that Microsoft offers themselves or something like Photoshop and Lightroom from Adobe or DaVinci's video editing platform Resolve 19. Just in case your software is not available, it has to be emulated, which ideally happens with a barely noticeable performance hit. And in the worst case, it is accompanied by crashes and in some cases, certain apps simply refuse to run. Your mileage will vary greatly depending on how niche or mainstream your use cases are. And since we simply cannot test everything, if you already own or used a new Snapdragon powered notebook and came across something that didn't work, feel free to post it in the comments below to let others know. This of course works the other way around as well. So if there's something that works without a problem, you know what to do. As of now, we have been able to test three SKUs of Qualcomm's new CPU family. The X1e 78100 running inside the VivoBook S15, the higher-end X1e 8100 enabling a dual-core boost up to 4 GHz and the further cut-down X Plus X1p 6400 which access to CPU cores, both powering Microsoft's new Surface Pro. As we mentioned in our VivoBook review, we cannot directly read the CPU's isolated power consumption, so we have to make educated guesses about power draw. This will also not directly be comparable to Intel and AMD, since the TDP values would include the power consumption of additional on-chip elements like memory and microcontrollers for example. And finally, before we get to our numbers, just a few pointers for our testing procedures. Again, we will rely on natively running tests across all platforms to make the comparison as fair as possible. And we did our power measurements with an external screen to reduce the impact of different screen sizes and panel technologies. And since we just used one example for every chip and performance varies greatly between devices, please keep in mind that this is just a very general comparison to give you guys an overview. So this is also by no means a final, this is the fastest notebook CPU ever video. Let's kick things off with single core performance in Cinebench 24 and Geekbench 6.2. In the latest release of everyone's favorite CPU torture test, the new silicon is sitting right in the middle between Intel and AMD below and Apple on top, with the X1e 8100 in the Surface Pro being able to pull away from its siblings thanks to its higher boost frequencies. Geekbench shows a similar picture with only marginal differences between the lower end Snapdragon CPUs and Intel and AMD's offerings. The faster variant can score quite a lead while Apple's M chips remain way out of reach for everyone. Especially the new M4 in the latest iPad Pro is simply bonkers. 
In terms of efficiency though, and again these are numbers for the whole system, which means there might be more factors at play here, these Snapdragons position themselves quite well against Intel and AMD once again, with only marginal differences between the two X Elite chips, while the smaller X Plus can score some extra points, being almost on par with Apple here, when it comes to power draw at least. However, the M chips still reign supreme with how much performance they can squeeze out of those watts. In multi-core loads in Cinebench, things are heavily dependent on power draw, and the X Elite and the VivoBook can outperform pretty much everything but Apple's M3 Max if it's allowed up to 50 watts. And it's even quite well positioned at a much more reasonable wattage. And even the Surface Pro can keep up quite well in its max performance setting and beats both Intel and AMD with those chips already running on more juice to begin with. Geekbench is grouping all the Snapdragon chips very closely together, so there seems to be no major impact of the very different TDP values. When it comes to pure performance grunt, Qualcomm can keep up with Apple rather well, while Intel and AMD do fall behind a little bit. Again, if we add efficiency to the mix, the perspective changes, and the Snapdragon chips seem to lose their advantage quickly if you go over 40 watts and beyond, hinting at an optimal range between 20 to 30 watts shown by the Surface Pro, which can at least get somewhat close to Apple's M3. Meanwhile, the VivoBook in its highest performance levels is not doing a lot better than our x86 reference systems here. On the GPU side of things, Qualcomm's Adreno Silicon sits somewhere between AMD's 780M and Intel's Arc in 3 d Mark's Wildlife, which is absolutely dominated by everything Apple has on offer. Meanwhile, the new Snapdragon chips get absolutely crushed in Geekbench, but earn back some points in GFXbench. And by the way guys, we have a lot more numbers in our written analysis on the website, so just in case you want to delve deeper into our results. So while those new Snapdragon notebooks will most likely not be your next gaming powerhouse for now, which they clearly also have not been designed for, the Adreno GPU does at least work rather efficiently, as shown by our Witcher 3 measurements with an external screen and the VivoBook S15. In addition, we also tested the power draw in an idle state and while playing a YouTube video on an external 4K display, once again to normalize our results as much as possible. The Snapdragon performs quite well, especially during video playback, and idle behavior will probably show quite some differences between different manufacturers, as you can see by comparing our numbers from the VivoBook and the Surface Pro. Alright folks, that should also be it for today. From a pure technical standpoint, Qualcomm's new Snapdragon Silicon is definitely very well placed against what is currently available both from Intel and AMD, and they can even beat Apple in some areas, at least when it comes to pure CPU performance. And while they can also beat the other options in terms of efficiency, even if it's sometimes just barely, Apple is still the absolute king of the hill when it comes to squeezing out as much performance as possible while barely sipping power. That said, the whole landscape of notebook CPUs is undergoing a lot of changes right now, and with AMD's Strixpoint CPUs right around the corner and Intel's Lunar Lake Silicon getting ready to launch within the next few months as well, Qualcomm's advantage might stand only for a very short while. If you even want to call it an advantage, since once again numbers in synthetic tests are one thing, user experience and app compatibility is something else entirely. So for one, the VivoBook's battery life and fan noise experience are very similar to those of Intel and AMD notebooks and very, very far away from the passively cooled MacBook Air for example. And while most of the software we tried so far ran well on the new architecture, it is still a situation you need to consider at least for the foreseeable future. That said, the potential is here. The potential of offering a viable alternative to established x86 platforms. The potential of offering something different. But if that is enough to make people buy into something completely new and unproven, well, again, only time will tell. As always, please let me know what you think and make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss our upcoming reviews like for the Surface Pro for example. And if you felt entertained and informed, well, I guess that like button works as well. That should be it for today, thanks a ton for watching, my name is Alex, you have been fantastic as always and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.